Hi everybody, welcome to another IJD to DWF repair video. This time I have on the bench an arcade power supply. The power supply belongs to an advisor arcade cabinet, which is a bootleg of Space Fury, made in Italy by Rumiano Company. It is a classic linear design with a big power transformer, diode bridge rectifiers, big smoothing electrolytic capacitors, and linear integrated voltage regulators. The big regulator, however, has the case too rusted to be identified. There is also a big power resistor. We'll see later what is its function. The output connector is hand labeled. And so is the input one. Since the schematic of this particular power supply is not available, I decided first of all to reverse engineer it and draw a complete schematic. This will help me checking that everything is working as expected and also help me identify the big power regulator whose port number is not readable anymore. So, first of all, all the voltages are obtained with a power transformer having two secondary windings, both of them center tapped. This allows getting two opposite polarity DC supply rails out of each secondary winding. Notice, however, that only the center tap of each secondary runs through a fuse that was done to make the supply smaller and cheaper, but fusing only the center tap does not help at all if, for example, two diodes on the same bridge rectifier short both ends of the same secondary winding. The 14 volts secondary is rectified and smoothed to obtain two opposite polarity unregulated DC rails. The positive rail is then regulated to 12 volt and the negative to minus 12 volts by a 7812 and a 7912 1 ampere regulators. The unregulated positive rail is also brought to the output connector via an additional 1 ampere fuse. This small circuit with a resistor, a zener diode and a small ceramic capacitor probably produces a 5V square wave at the AC mains frequency. We'll check it later with the oscilloscope once everything is up and running. The lower voltage of this square wave will be likely below ground, at a bit higher voltage than minus 1V. The 10 volts AC secondary is also rectified and smoothed to obtain two opposite polarity unregulated DC rails. However, the positive rail is rectified using 6 ampere diodes. The negative DC rail is then regulated to minus 5 volts with a 7905 1 ampere regulator. However, the circuit lacked a bypass capacitor right at the output of the 7905. This is a bad choice since these regulators would be unstable without a capacitor as close as possible to their outputs. The PCB has a space for such a capacitor next to the output connector, but as you can see in the picture, the position was left unpopulated. I then decided to solder a 100 nanofarad ceramic capacitor right under the minus 5 volts regulator. The plus 5V rail is regulated with a slightly more complex circuit. First of all, the likely candidate for the TO3 regulator is the LM109K, since the pinout is compatible and also its current rating is acceptable as we are going to see later. The LM109 is a fixed 5V regulator, but this small circuit can move the reference ground of the regulator between a slightly negative voltage obtained with a resistive divider between the minus 5V rail and ground and a slightly positive voltage obtained with a divider between the plus 5 rail and ground. The big 10V resistor is placed between the input and the output pins of the regulator. This resistor works as a current booster, allowing the regulator to supply more than its rated current, which is about 1A. However, this bypass resistor requires a minimum supply current to be drawn for the output voltage to become regulated. Let's see how it works.
Whenever we have a bypass through system between input and output of a linear regulator, we need to calculate the minimum load current that allows the regulator to work at the rated output voltage. At any load current less than the minimum one, the output voltage will be higher than the nominal one. First, we have to calculate the input voltage to the regulator, that is the peak rectified AC voltage. We don't need to be super precise with calculations. The RMS AC voltage was around 10.6 volts, so we subtract one diode drop because of the center tap rectification and multiply the value by the square root of 2, which is approximated as 1.41. Then we calculate the required minimum load current simply as the difference between the input and the output voltage divided by the bypass resistor. In this case, we obtain 1.6 amperes. And then we can calculate what is the value for a suitable load resistor to connect between the output and ground to properly test the regulator. This is simply the rated output voltage divided by the minimum load current we calculated before. So in this case we obtain 3.1 ohms. Of course it is better to use a slightly lower resistor to allow for any approximation we made. The load resistor needs to withstand a power equal to the output voltage squared divided by the resistor value, so in this case about 8 watts. I'm going then to look for two 5.6 ohms at 5 watts resistor to be connected in parallel. Before powering it on, I've of course checked all diodes with the multimeter and all capacitors for proper capacitance value and ESR. During the inspection, however, I've noticed that one of the fuse holders had a broken pin due to oxidization. So, of course, I needed to replace that fuse holder. I have then removed and checked the unreadable 5V regulator to make sure it's still working fine before doing the load test. As you can see, its output voltage is almost spot on, so it can be soldered in place again to make the final test. Ok, AC is connected to the transformer primary. and I have connected only one 5.6 ohms load resistor. That's to demonstrate that with insufficient load the output voltage is indeed higher than the rated one. I have now connected two resistors in parallel to make a proper load. At this point the regulator starts working. We then verify that the voltage can be varied with the trimmer. The final adjustment must be done when the supply is in its cabinet and by measuring the voltage right at the gain PCB input. With the minimum load the linear regulator must barely get warm. Now I only have to verify that all other supply outputs are working fine. On the regulator 20 volts, minus 12 volts, plus 12 volts, minus 5 volts, and on regulator the 13 volts. And last, we want to verify the 5 volts square wave output which appears to be working fine too. As predicted, the lower part of the square wave is slightly negative. So this is all for this short video. I hope it was interesting and that you learned something. If you have any question, please use the comment section below. I hope you return to my channel in the future. Have a nice time and thank you for watching.